These are the most important sneaker releases that you need to know about in the second half of September 2023. This is 37. But first, I want to give a huge thank you to the sponsor of today's video, Soul Premise. Soul Premise makes some of the best bags out there, and they're all specifically designed to carry your sneakers in style and safely. In fact, Soul Premise bags are TSA approved, which means you can bring them onto the airplane with you as a carry-on rather than have to check them underneath the plane, and you never know what's going to happen to your expensive sneakers down there. It's the worst. I bring my Soul Premise bags with me everywhere, whether it's to the office or whether it's on a trip somewhere else in the world. I love these bags. They're great quality, and they all look great. So if you want to carry your sneakers safely, securely, and in style, I definitely recommend checking out Soul Premise by clicking the link in the top of the description below, and use my code SETH for 40% off your entire order. Once again, huge thank you to Soul Premise for sponsoring today's video. Starting things off on September 15th, we've got the Nike Nocta Glide in black and white. So according to Nike, this shoe is inspired by the Zoom Flight 95. You don't say. And it's fair to say that Drake loves nostalgia. His last couple Nocta sneakers with Nike have looked pretty 90s. Not to say that's a bad thing, but it definitely has a very specific aesthetic that I think some people will love and other people not so much. I'm not gonna lie, I don't love the way this sneaker looks, but there is some morbid curiosity there to make me want to try them. I mean, it's really not a bad shoe. I shouldn't be hating on the shoe this much, but genuinely, it's not its not the kind of shoe that I think everyone can rock in every situation. It's definitely a very uh, unique look. And as you can probably tell, this shoe was made to look like a basketball sneaker, but it's actually more of a lifestyle sneaker, according to Nike. But uh, honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if you could play ball in it. I don't know if it'd be the best shoe to play basketball in, but you probably could if you needed to. I mean, you can play basketball in anything. But like I said, it's not a sneaker that I'm immediately in love with, but it is something that I do want to check out. And because it is the latest new silhouette from Drake and Nocta, I do think that there will be some hype behind this sneaker, but I think it's going to be a slower seller. So if you want to walk into the store the day of release, maybe a couple hours after the store opens, you should still be able to find certain sizes. That's just my guess, but I wouldn't be surprised if you don't have too hard of a time grabbing this shoe. Moving on to the 16th, we've got the Nike Air Force One Low Terror Squad Blackout. This is probably the most anticipated Air Force One Low release since the last Off-White Air Force One Low release. This shoe is wildly hyped up. And I mean, for good reason. This shoe was a Fat Joe exclusive for decades, and now Nike is finally releasing it to the public. And if you're not familiar with the history behind this sneaker, back in 2003, there was supposed to be an iconic basketball game between Fat Joe and his crew, and Jay-Z and his crew, and it was all gonna take place at Rucker Park in New York City. However, right before the game started, there was that famous NYC blackout and the game never happened. Also, I should mention that the players on either artist's side were not just regular scrubs. They were people like Allen Iverson and LeBron James and Shaquille O'Neal. It was going to be an absolutely insane game. And of course, it never happened. And that's the reason that the shoe was named the Blackout Terror Squad Air Force One, because that's what stopped the game. And I mean, even if you don't care about the history behind the shoe, the colorway of this sneaker is actually really solid as well. You've got a white premium leather upper accented with black hits and of course the TS branding on the lateral side of the heel. And for 150 bucks on September 16th, this iconic pair of Air Force One history can be yours if you can grab a pair. But that's going to be very difficult because I definitely see the issue selling out. Continuing on to September 18th, we've got the Adidas Crazy 8 in Team Orange. This iconic Adidas silhouette is returning in a bright orange, blue, and white makeup. Also, as I'm sure a lot of you know, this was originally a Kobe Bryant silhouette, but they changed the name to the Crazy 8s after Kobe left to go to Nike. I gotta be honest, while I like the materials used on this shoe, that orange suede looks dope. The colorway is just not exactly for me. However, I do like the combination of blue, orange, and white all in one sneaker. It's a clean look. It's just a lot. It's a lot of orange hitting you in the face, and for that reason, I'm not gonna grab this shoe. I also don't think there's a huge amount of hype behind the sneaker, so because of that, I'm gonna give this shoe a sit. Next up, on September 19th, we've got the Nike LeBron 4 Graffiti. This shoe used to be one of LeBron's most sought after silhouettes, and pairs would go for thousands of dollars. But now, you can grab a pair of the highly coveted LeBron 4 Graffitis for $240, which is a lot of money for retail, to be honest. That being said, this is still an iconic silhouette and a colorway that everybody knows and loves. However, you can grab a pair right now on StockX for like 150 bucks, almost $100 below retail. And if you guys want to check that out or any of the other shoes that I talk about in today's list, I've made sure to leave affiliate links to all of these shoes in the description below. But seriously, don't spend $240 on this shoe when you can buy it before it even comes out on the resale market for $100 cheaper. I've got to say though that the NYC inspired graffiti look does look clean on the LeBron 4s and it makes sense why it was such a popular colorway back in the day, but it just doesn't seem to be doing it anymore. And for that reason, I'm giving this shoe an absolute sit, which you guys should know already because you can grab it for $100 cheaper days before it even releases. 
Continuing on September 20th, we've got the Nike ISPA Mind Body in black and white. So according to the sneakers app, this shoe is designed to be the embodiment of comfort. It features a pillowy soft foam midsole and a recycled yarn fly knit upper. And I mean, yeah, it does kind of look like a sleeping bag, so it does look comfortable as well. I do really love Nike's ISPA department. I think what they do is really cool and very innovative, but this shoe is not something I could ever see myself really rocking on a regular basis, at least not outside the house. That's not a diss, I'm just saying it looks like a house shoe. If you like the way the sneaker looks, it's not a bad bad way to go if you're willing to spend $180 on what essentially is a slipper. And for that reason, I do think this shoe is probably not going to fly off shelves, so I'm giving this shoe a sit. Also dropping on the 20th, we've got the Air Jordan 6 Low PSG. So every year or so, Jordan Brand does a collaboration with PSG, the French football club, or I should say the Parisian football club. And this time around, they're changing things up a little bit because unlike with their previous collaborations that were very soccer focused, this one seems to take a little bit of soccer and a little bit of basketball and mash them together into one shoe that doesn't really look like it's either a basketball shoe or a soccer shoe. <laughs> According to the sneakers app, the orange hits are meant to symbolize the wood floor of a basketball court and the rest of the colors are meant to symbolize the Parisian team PSG. I do have to say that the colors used on the shoe aren't exactly my thing. I think the best, I guess, collaboration from the PSG Jordan brand partnership was the Air Jordan 4s that were white with those maroon hits. I thought those were incredible. But this one just kind of, in my opinion, falls flat a little bit. However, the materials on this shoe look excellent. You've got suede, you've got tumbled leathers, you've got some nice sort of stitched in details. It's a clean sneaker all around. It's just not that hyped up. And after checking the resale market, it does look like this $200 shoe is selling for below retail before it even releases. So for that reason, I'm giving this shoe a sit. And also, if you guys want to check this shoe out, there is a link in the description below. Again, why grab it for retail when you can grab it for less? Moving on to September 21st, we've got two different colorways of the Cold Wall Nike Air Max Plus. So the two colorways come in onyx and in stone, and what's interesting about this collaboration is that instead of using the standard Air Max Plus materials on the upper, they're actually using sort of a pressed or molded leather. Which I've gotta say, I actually don't hate. I think this is a very, very clean sneaker. However, that $220 price point is tough for a pair of Air Maxes. The main focus on this shoe are those sort of, uh, I guess, vein details wrapping up on the side of the sneaker, which on the standard pair of Air Max Pluses, usually come in a different color or a different material, so they sort of differentiate themselves from the rest of the shoe. However, on this shoe, it kind of looks like the veins underneath some skin. It kind of gives me a weird, like, ick. But at the same time, it's a dope looking sneaker, and I think in this like all blacked out or all like grayed out look, it's very, very clean. I will say that I love the minimalism of this shoe. The Air Max Plus was never really a minimalistic shoe, but in this simple monochromatic makeup, it looks dope. I really, really like it. Again, kind of weirds me out, but in a good way, I guess. But even though this shoe is a collab with a cold wall, I just don't think that $220 price point is gonna fly with a lot of people. And for that reason, I do think this shoe is probably gonna end up sitting on shelves. And I think the fact that this shoe is a collab collaboration with the cold wall means that this shoe's hype level is going to be higher than it usually would be if it was just a standard Nike release. So for that reason, I'm giving both the Onyx and the Bone colorway a sell. Then dropping on September 22nd is the Air Jordan 11 IE Craft. The Jordan 11 IE is my least favorite pair of Air Jordan 11s, and it seems to be the general consensus when it comes to Air Jordan 11s. People love the standard version or even the low top version, but the IEs, they just don't do it for people, which is interesting because the first Air Jordan 11 low was a pair of IEs. I guess for basketball, it could be a little bit more breathable, which is a good thing. However, the patent leather does provide some really nice lockdown on the sides of the sneakers, so I don't know which shoe is better overall. I've never played basketball in either one of those shoes. I've actually only ever played basketball in Jordan Futures, which is ridiculous. Out of all the 11 style sneakers that I could play basketball in, the Futures are the ones I play basketball in, which are the worst ones. But either way, I just don't think this shoe looks that great. This time around, however, this craft colorway comes in a primarily black upper accented by sort of a grayish colored mesh, and of course the standard Air Jordan 11 midsole and outsole. And I mean, even with that full length Nike Air unit, it's not a shoe that I feel like I need in my collection, especially now for $185. I'm sure you can find it cheaper online. So for that reason, I am giving this shoe a sit. Moving on to the 23rd, we've got the Air Jordan 2 Black Cement. So this shoe is exactly what it sounds like. It's the Black Cement colorway on a pair of Air Jordan 2s. Jordan Brand is going so hard on the Air Jordan 2s right now, and they're throwing everything that they have at it. And weirdly enough, the best thing that they ever did was release the OG, which is selling for way below retail right now, which is crazy to me, and also drop the Off-White collaboration. And since then, they haven't really done anything that's made me that excited about the two. I guess the, the uh, J Balvin 2s were pretty dope, I'm not gonna lie. But as someone whose favorite colorway of the Air Jordan 3 is the black cement, and actually also the white cement, this colorway just does not look right on the Air Jordan 2. It doesn't look bad, but it's just... 
it just doesn't look great. Apparently the reason that Jordan brand took this wildly popular Air Jordan 3 colorway and put it on the Air Jordan 2 is because this year is the 35th anniversary of the Air Jordan 3. And that's the reason why we've had shoes like the True Blue Ones or the black cement ones because they're taking classic Air Jordan 3 colorways and putting them on other silhouettes. And in my opinion, None of them have really hit. The only one I actually really liked was the uh, Air Jordan 1 Lowe's in that black cement colorway, or I guess elephant print colorway. I mean, don't get me wrong. It's a primarily black Air Jordan 2 with some gray hits on the heel tab and on the tongue. And of course, you've got some red accents and a cream colored midsole. It's a clean Air Jordan 2. But when you know that it's a black cement colorway on a pair of sneakers that's never really had the black cement colorway, at least like this, it's just not a shoe that I think a lot of people are gonna want that bad. And I mean, just looking at the way that the other recent release Air Jordan 2s have done, I just don't think this $175 pair of black cement 2s is gonna move the needle. So for that reason, I'm giving this shoe a sit. That said though, it's not a bad sneaker and the Air Jordan 2, in my opinion, is an incredibly underrated silhouette that if you haven't tried yet, I definitely recommend trying it. I personally would say try the OG colorway, but this colorway is good too. Also dropping on the 23rd is a pair of sneakers that I know very little about, and that's the Nike SB Dunk Low Albino and Preto Pearl White. So apparently this pair of Nike SB Dunk Lows is inspired by Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and features a black belt detail on the Nike swoosh. But that's pretty much all I can tell you. I know nothing about BJJ. I can, however, speak to the materials used on this shoe. The upper of the shoe comes in sort of a light tan canvas color, and then the Nike swoosh again comes in black with some white accents. This Nike SB Dunk Low is retailing for 130 bucks. It's a very clean overall Nike SB Dunk Low. I'm interested to know why they decided to choose a Nike SB Dunk Low for this particular collaboration or sneaker. I, I have no idea. I'm, I'm sure there's a reason why, I just don't know what that reason is. But because the shoe is a Nike SB Dunk Low, I definitely think it's gonna sell out. Maybe that's the reason, actually. And then finally, rounding off the 23rd, we've got the Air Jordan 3 J Balvin Medellin Sunset. So in the last Sitter Cell video, I said that this shoe was gonna drop on the 2nd because that was the release date that everyone was thinking that it was gonna drop on. And I did say in that video that I wasn't totally sure and that I hadn't seen any other drop information about this shoe, so I thought that there was a good chance that it would get moved or that that wasn't actually the release date. And that seems to be the case. That was never actually the release date. Or maybe it was, but it was never official. I don't know the reason, but either way, we're getting this shoe finally on the 23rd. Until the shoe actually drops, we don't know Know for sure that's the case for all these sneakers nike loves to move things around but it looks like this shoe will be dropping on the 23rd so because we've already talked about this shoe in a sitter cell video i'm not going to go too in depth but i do think this is one of the cleaner j balvin sneakers probably the cleanest collaboration he's ever done with jordan brand the upper of the shoe comes in a cream tumbled leather with these really nice yellow edges it features this beautiful gradient that's meant to represent the medellin sunset on both the midsole of the sneaker and on the heel tab and as far as air jordan 3s go this is definitely near the top of the list for 2023 it's not going to beat the reimagined threes, at least in my opinion, but it's up there, maybe at number two or number three. I've said it a bunch, but I didn't love the J Balvin ones. I just felt like that shoe was too crazy. It reminded me of what I see when I'm getting a migraine. So because of that, I think I was a little biased against it, but the Air Jordan twos with that beautiful cloudy upper and of course the light up tongue were fire. And this one is just sort of the, the pinnacle of all of his collaborations. And I love this shoe and I'm definitely gonna try and grab a pair for myself, not just to review, but also to rock. But unfortunately, there are a few things standing in my way. The first is the $250 price point. It's not the cheapest pair of Air Jordans to ever release. And the second is the fact that this shoe is absolutely going to be limited and probably going to be very popular because of how clean it is and because of the fact that it's a collaboration. So for that reason, I'm giving this shoe a sell. And if you know anyone who has a pair early for a review, hit me up. Moving on to the 26th, we've got the return of a sneaker that I don't know if anyone actually missed, and that's the women's Nike Air Footscape woven in brown and natural. So when the Union LA Air Jordan 1s first leaked, I was like, this could be a way that they're trying to slowly nudge people in the direction of buying their maybe upcoming footscapes. At the time, I didn't know that the footscapes were coming back, but it doesn't surprise me that about a month after the release of the Union LA's, which featured the same woven detail, we're getting the original shoe with that woven detail, Retroed. And I know a lot of people didn't like this detail on the Air Jordan 1s, but on this shoe, the original shoe that this detail was on, it looks worse. It looks worse, I'm sorry, I hate it. I've never been a Footscape fan. I know some people are nostalgic towards this shoe, but that person is not me. And uh, I just don't, I just don't know why Nike brought this shoe back. Apparently the idea behind the woven detail, at least originally, was to make the shoe feel a little bit more natural and move with your foot more like a sock than like a shoe. And in that way, I do appreciate its design, but I just don't love it. And the fact that they paired it with this like giraffe print just looks, it just looks rough. If they had gone with the standard footscape like blue or something, maybe that would be fine. But for me, this shoe is just a no go. And I don't think anyone's gonna really be that excited about grabbing this shoe. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe there are people lining up to pay the $160 retail price for this shoe, but I doubt it. And for that reason, I'm giving this shoe a sit. 
And then dropping on the 30th, we've got the Air Jordan 8 playoffs. So I don't know if you guys followed my most recent season of the $20 sneaker collection, but in that season, I tried to build a Jordan clock with all the original Air Jordan colorways, you know, as part of the clock. So it went from like 1 to 12, you know, or 12 to 1, I don't know. Doesn't matter. Either way, I got the playoff 8s as the 8 o'clock spot, and uh, it's my favorite colorway of the Air Jordan 8s. The Aquas are close, but the playoff 8s are the one for me. And actually, speaking of the $20 sneaker collection, the new season is starting on Saturday, which I think at the time this video goes live is tomorrow. So if you guys want to watch that series as soon as it drops, make sure to click the notification bell if you haven't yet, and of course, subscribe to the channel. But hey, we're not talking about that right now. We're talking about the return of the classic Air Jordan 8 playoffs. This shoe comes in a beautiful black suede upper, accented by blue, yellow, red, and white hits. And I I think it looks amazing. And while the Air Jordan 8 is not one of the more popular Air Jordan silhouettes at this moment, although it's been one of the more popular silhouettes throughout history, it's definitely a colorway that I think most people are going to come out of the woodwork to grab. And unfortunately, this shoe has a higher price point than it used to have. Now it's at $210, but regardless, I don't think that's going to turn a lot of people off because this is such a classic colorway that I think a lot of people are going to want to grab, including myself. I may try and double up. I don't know. That might be crazy. But either way, it's the OG classic colorway of one of the most iconic sneakers of all time. And so for that reason, I do think that this shoe will sell out very quickly, even though I'm sure there's going to be a lot of pairs of it. But hey, that pretty much wraps things up. I'll see you guys in the next one.